my mother was an artist and that had a big effect on me. And um, so I think that it was pretty clear right from the beginning that that's what I would be. I was in my early 40s and I said to my husband then, I said, I'm going to write and paint now because I always thought I was going to write and paint. I, I decided that when, as I was a kid that that's what adults did. But of course I hadn't factored in the fact that you had to earn a living. I wanted a job in the arts and there was very little that you could do unless you left Queensland and went to Sydney and went to East Sydney Tech. Or... I did much the same course as um, Marvin and John. We all studied to be secondary school art teachers. Oh, when I went to Brisbane, I didn't get out of that house much. I just walked from that share house, did my work three years. <laughs> it wasn't. And Brisbane before the 80s was just horrible. So I started teaching when I was 19 and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I wouldn't have had the confidence to exhibit it in Brisbane. It would have seemed too much. We didn't know Queensland at all, but we chose Queensland because of the climate. So we bought a van, which we slept in, and we just drove around until we found a place that looked all right and Bunnaby looked okay. Uh, when I found out that I'd been transferred to Bundaberg. It was kind of like, oh, this is not going to be so hot. Oh, I thought that was the end of the earth. I mean, I wanted to expand the wings. I didn't necessarily want to be coming back to hometowns and things like that, but it, that worked exceptionally well. It's a good place, Bundaberg, if you want to paint. I moved down to the sea and sometimes it was the water and the tides and the sea and the sand and yeah, it was mostly mostly my environment there. I think none of that I was familiar with because I came from Western Queensland and all of these things and the idea of living on the beach or even being anywhere near the sea was all new to me and I think that I really, really explored how I could paint that sea. Because Bundaberg was pretty quiet, I lived down the beach, you know, so I would swim, I would surf, but living down at Bagara, there was kind of that subject I was painting. Then um, Crowley Busby opened the Alamander. Yeah, I remember her sort of tossing around for an idea and she had a lovely garden and eventually she settled on this one flower that was in the garden, the Alamander, which was blooming at the front gate. And she said, I think we'll call it that. And so we started exhibiting. Yeah, I exhibited nearly all the time that it was open. And from my reckoning, I think it might have opened in about 1973. And the whole time that Corrie ran the gallery, she was meticulous about her payment of artists, uh, getting, getting their money in and getting them out. It was all happened very quickly. She didn't let it go for months on end, which was, one, was to our advantage, you know, we enjoyed working there. So um, as she moved away, possibly about 1985 and went to Sydney, um, she thought that that, you know, that was where she wanted to be, that was where there was a, more of an art scene. And so she lived a little bit of a bohemian life. Uh, which was quite exciting and I'd go down and every opportunity take a bus to Sydney. Uh, and that friendship lasted right till she died in 2005. The first show at the Alamanda were a series of paintings about so size that were all based on a trip up to the Whitsunday Islands and to Cairns and uh, up onto the Tablelands so they were uh, just acrylic on canvas scenes of that. Um, I made the stretches myself, I framed them incredibly poorly um, and they're all $44 each. It's exciting to be young and exhibiting and being such a support, being, you know, it's a safe sort of environment. No one's going to come along and say, well, what is this? And, um, you know, we were well supported um, with sales as well. You know, there was, people were really it was wonderful. So it was just a nice synchronicity all round. I just think it was a vital part of growing up and maturing and, you know, it was, it was exciting. There was good friends and good times and, you know, it's a, a lovely depth of 
uh, feeling with it now. It's no, there's nothing superficial. Um, but then Bundaberg Sugar Company put up that $2,000 award, which, you know, a couple of us were lucky enough to win. Sometime into my stay there, they developed quite a, a big award called the Bundaberg Sugar Award, and they had this big gala night and many, many different sections and prizes you could win, and a, a judge would be brought in from <clears throat> the big smoke somewhere. And yeah, many of those artists, including myself, won major awards there, you know, the, the Bundaberg Sugar Prize Award or a major drawing award and yeah we won lots of things and it was all that was fun <laughs> and then um, Jennifer or somebody told me about the flying arts and that was great you know to be able to get into that so when um, Merv Moriarty started coming to Bundaberg and I can't remember how I found out about it but just started going along I think it gave us uh, a boost you know um, we went along and it was exciting and you know it, it was much more exciting than going to Monash you know there it was because of Mervyn. The thing I enjoyed most was uh, on the Saturday afternoon there'd be feedback you'd take paintings along and every, you know everyone would be in a circle they would um, put their work out and then Merv would give feedback about the, that which was always you know, sensitively done. And these people, that's a lot of input into small areas, even though it wasn't every month, every three months was adequate. Mervyn initially, uh, he would come and sometimes bring well-known artists with him. You just learned so much. Whether he was talking about your work or other people's work, it was just kind of like light bulb moments all the time, just, oh yeah, okay. That first group of paintings that I showed at the Alamanda, he said to me after I showed him, yeah, because I was thinking, yeah. He said, I want you to go away and paint 30 different blues and then paint another 30 different blues. And I was kind of like, I've got to do that. And it was a really important time because that with Merv's um, theory on colour and how to approach it, it kind of started this lifelong, complete um, joy of trying to work out and use colour. I, I learnt more by mixing with the people that went. Uh, I'm not from their work, but from them. I just loved the people that went, you know. I got, I got an awful lot out of them and I was, I was just determined to paint one hand paints, you know. It's hard to imagine those years without that. It provided a, a, a place to exchange ideas and to, um, you know, with the Flying Arts School coming in regularly too, it also, the work could be critiqued. Um, the, the tutors would come around to Coralie's um, home and there would be a, an opportunity for the tutor to have a look at what you've done as a body of work and give you really valuable feedback. I, I, I think that's a, that's a vital part of how we are as people. We've got to settle into something, you know, not rushing to find anything else. And, and personally, no, I, I just think it was, you know, we, we all went to each other's exhibitions. We still go to each other's exhibitions. You, you know, there's a, a, a nice group of friends. It was some you know, some you don't. Uh, you like seeing the development? Yeah, I, I've been happy. I could afford to buy a studio, for goodness sake. I could afford to buy a place. I couldn't afford to do that in Melbourne. It's something that I always you know, have incredibly grateful to because for whatever my little painting career is, would never have occurred without that time in Bundaberg. It's completely dependent on those years. So thanks, Bundy. Love it. <laughs>